Where is all that light coming from? I wondered. I screamed and immediately slammed the door. After living in an underground mansion for 15 years, I had come across a trap door that led me to a whole new world. My name is Karen, or Genevieve. I'm not sure which one to use anymore. Yeah, about that, I'll dive in real soon. First, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Just trust me on this one. Just like any other day, I woke up and got started doing my favorite thing, painting. My friend Coco just watched. I was busy chatting away with her when I tripped over the edge of a rug and fell flat on my face. I groaned as I sat up. That's when I saw the rug had moved, and there was a trap door under it. The trap door led to a tunnel, which led to that door I'd just opened. Coco and I stared at each other in shock. It took me a while to open the door again. We both stepped out into this new world. What is this now? We were so fascinated that we just started wandering, staring around in wonder. I had no idea how far we'd gone. Soon, it started to get dark, and I felt scared. At the top of the slope, we saw a sea of glittering lights in the distance. Coco pointed towards it and said, That's where we must go! After some time, the ground beneath our feet went from squishy and green to hard and black. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a loud speedy metal box with lights rushed up from behind me. It flashed by us with a loud honk. My heart was pounding. I had no idea what that was. I turned around to go back, but realized in horror that I had no idea where home was. We had to keep walking towards the lights. It was getting light again by the time we got there, and I couldn't stop staring at everything. Everywhere I looked, I could see creatures just like me, but they looked weird wearing these clothes. We were afraid, so Coco pulled my arm, and we ran into the nearest room and started walking around. I stared. There were shelves and shelves piled with stuff I had no clue about. But then I saw something familiar. Canned food! I quickly grabbed a few tins and we started running out when a man pointed at me and shouted, Stop that little thief! Someone grabbed me to make sure I couldn't escape, while another snatched the cans from me. I tried to explain, but they all just looked back at me with stupid expressions. And soon enough, we were getting our first car ride. To the police station! When we got there, the police tried to investigate us, but they couldn't understand anything. We spent that night in a jail cell, and honestly, I felt quite at home in a room with no windows. The next morning, they got us out and we were placed with the foster family, and that's where I was given the name Karen. Coco felt really scared and refused to go to dinner, so I had to go alone. The first night, they gave me my plate of food with a fork next to it. I thought it was odd, but I just started eating with my fingers. When I was about done, I looked up and saw everyone was staring at me. I noticed they were all eating with their forks. We had forks in the mansion, but I didn't know what they were for. I didn't really like being there. My foster dad and brother were mean. The only person who was kind to me was my foster mom. She taught me to speak and read. Coco would go and hide whenever we had our lessons. I taught her everything I was learning when we were alone. One night, when I thought everyone was asleep, I was teaching Coco when my foster brother walked into the room. He said, Who are you talking to, freak? I could tell that wasn't a nice word. I stuttered. M my f friend He let out a cackle of laughter. Dad, would you come in here and listen to this? Karen has a friend! My foster dad walked in, and when my brother told him what I'd said, they both roared with laughter. The dad said, I knew we got a really stupid one. Can we send her back, please? They both left the room laughing and left me feeling humiliated. I was just glad Coco had the chance to jump under the bed. And that night, I packed my few things and we ran away. We ended up living on the streets for a while, which I liked in a way. I was free to do anything and we didn't have to talk to anyone. We would dig through trash cans for food and even found some new clothes. I woke up one day to find Coco gone. She had this habit of wandering on her own every now and then. Walking around the city, I noticed a few men off in the distance. They were all wearing black and were crouching down under a bridge. Suddenly, I started to see bright colors appearing all around them, like magic. Oh my god, it looked like paint! And out of cans, of all things. I wanted to be a part of it. I ran up to them, so excited, waving my hands wildly. But I guess I scared them because as soon as they saw me, they all ran away. I felt a little bummed, 
but I was happy they'd left the cans behind. I shook them and fidgeted with them for a while. Then I pushed the top down and sprayed myself in the face. My eyes, my eyes! I staggered around for a few minutes. As soon as my vision cleared, I picked up all the spray cans and hurried away. Coco found me soon after, and I was so excited to show her my new paint cans. After a little testing, I managed to figure out how they worked. And oh boy, there was no stopping me after that. I loved painting with the spray cans. It was so much better than painting with a toothbrush. Then, one day, as I was painting in a parking lot, a few guys came up to me. Looking at their black, paint-covered clothes, I realized they were the people I'd stolen the cans from. I was afraid they'd hurt me for taking their stuff. To my surprise, they spoke to me kindly and said their boss had been looking for me. Up close, I realized they weren't much older than me. Their black overalls looked old and torn. Just then, a woman walked up behind them. She was the most beautiful creature I'd ever seen. She smiled and spoke to me so warmly, I would have followed her anywhere. Her name, she told me, was Sharon. She said that she was a painter too, and my graffiti was some of the most beautiful art she had ever seen. She also told me I could come and live with her, and she would teach me more. As I was about to get into the car, Coco tugged at my hand. I don't have a good feeling about this, she whispered. I looked around hoping no one had heard her. I shook her off and climbed into the car. She didn't budge. Fine, she could find me when she wanted to. Sharon's house was large and beautiful, and I was so happy she'd found me. This new world was turning out to be a better place than I thought. But soon enough, I started to discover that things weren't quite right. We were put in a room with a supply of paints and canvases. I wasn't allowed to leave the house. I soon realized the other artists lived here too, and no one could leave without Sharon's permission. I was happy to be painting, but as soon as I was done, Sharon would carry away my art and I never saw it again, and she didn't give me enough to eat. If she was really pleased with my work, I'd get half a chocolate chip cookie as an extra treat. As time went by, she became more cruel. She kept pushing me harder and I was getting so tired. I didn't really enjoy painting that much anymore. If I hadn't done all the work she wanted, she would shout at me. Coco was terrified of her and stayed hidden somewhere all the time. One night, I was really hungry and I snuck into the kitchen in the dark. I had just taken a big fat cookie from the jar. When Sharon walked in, she went totally berserk and screamed at me. She threw my cookie in the trash and locked me up for two days with only a few apples to eat. I was really miserable there, but I had two silver linings in my life, David and Billy. David was the kindest man I'd ever met. He was Sharon's personal assistant, and he brought us our weekly painting supplies. I would be sure to have a lovely piece painted before he came because he thought I was just brilliant. I just felt warm and fuzzy inside when he smiled at me. He was nothing like my horrible foster dad. One time when he dropped by, Sharon had just half deafened me with her high-pitched screaming because I'd accidentally spilled a small can of paint. She had just stormed off when David came in. He said he would clean up and handed me a bag of cookies. He muttered, Sharon's a horrible woman and I hate working for her too. I'll get you out of here one day, Karen. You just keep up your painting till then. I'll find a way for us both real soon. I felt ecstatic. 